Right. Um, just waiting on a few more persons here. Sir, this is a second class, right? Or the third. A third. So much no taggy. Missed class last week. Mm. I'm going to watch about that one here, no, because I'm going to have to run. Okay. But I'm going to ride punch up with it. But I think I'm going to say that. The first class you never teach, not you just talk. Right, so, all right, so the second class. Yeah, yeah. All right, sir. All right, so, we wanted to talk about poll placement. And we um, wanted to talk about what we call, before we do any problems, we want to talk about what we mean by dominant poll. Um, now, the dominant pole, according to your, your textbook, will say a whole heap of things, but let me try to break it down as simply as I can. When you read the textbook, um, it might not sound anything like what I'm saying, but is, we say the same thing, but, um, yeah. Whichever thing you read about dominant pole. All right, let me just give an example. So let's just say that the transfer function of this system is 4 over s minus 1. Sorry, s plus 1, s plus 2, s plus 10. So, um, you know, that, that would lead to and uh, the poles of the system, s equal minus 1, s equal minus 2, s equal minus 10. So that would lead to a solution that would say, um, y of t is equal to a, a to the minus 1t plus b e to the minus 2t plus c e to the minus 10t plus the particular integral depending on what we have here for, for the solution. So if we make a plot of the output, because this represents the output, What we are saying is that our output is going to have y equal e to the minus t, y equal e to the minus 2t, and y equal e to the minus 10t. So this is So, so this is e to the minus t e to the minus 2t e to the minus 10t and y is the sum of Or output y is the sum of all of these to get the, the, the y value that we are going to be looking towards. So, 
sono um, the output is the sum of the three. So if let us draw a line down and say, all right, we're adding the, the three things that are here. Uh, sir, you know I record. No. Oh, somebody record me. Keep on forget. Give me the um. How you do it again? Give me the host. No, uh, they are allowed to record. Okay. All right. All right, so just for the sake of the recording, we're talking about the dominant pole before we go back to pole placement. So we're saying that if you had the S plus 1, S plus 2, S plus 10, then the poles are minus 1, minus 2, or minus 10. And that would lead me to have an output of A e to the minus T, but that is for the first pole. A e to the minus 2T, that's for the second pole. And C e to the minus 10T, that's for the third pole. And if we make a little sketch, what we are saying now is that the output is the sum of the values. So let us say that t equal one second. The output is, is let us say that this value here is five, and this value here is four, and this value here is Um, point one. So, output equal five plus four plus point one. So that's nine point one. So what I'm getting at now is that these poles here, which is these poles here, the output, they are called dominant. Because they add the most to mm, because they add the most to the to the output. Why? Their contribution is greater. Right? Contribution is more. The contribution is more. So your textbook tells you that the dominal pole is the one that is closer to the um, closer to the, the poles that are closer to the y-axis y -axis are the ones that are dominant. But um, I don't think they do a good job of explaining why they are dominant. Right? They are, yes, because they are closer to y-axis. Then when you can calculate in the output, they give a bigger contribution to your calculation for your output. So, um, th that is all the discussion about the dominant pole. We're going to need to have, have an understanding of what we mean by dominant pole when we, when we look at this evening's aspect of pole placement. So we're going to take an example.
And so I want to look at that problem. No. You will observe two things, that the plant is a third order plant. So, um, All the time that we have been working, we have been working with second order systems. So what do we do when we have a third order system and we need two gains for the third order system? And somebody look around and see can um tell me what the formula that we had for. So we want the peak overshoot to be ten percent and we want the settling time to be two seconds. What the formula for peak overshoot again? And the formula for settling time. Um, P cover shoot is um P e, e to the minus damping ratio pi. Yeah, that is the 
over square root of one minus damping ratio squared. Second time. Um, four over damping ratio omega n. All right, and then we'll say the damping ratio. If we wrote out the formula for the damping ratio, damping ratio was equal to what? Omega n. Um, no, in terms of the peak overshoot. Oh, um, hold on. Length squared peak overshoot over pi squared plus ln squared maximum peak overshoot. All right, so we're going to determine the damping ratio now. So that is ln squared 0 0.1 over pi squared plus ln squared 0 0.1. Yeah, just realize that. You know if we have the square root? Yes, yeah. All right, so much that work out. Calculator yeah, was here somewhere. Where were you working this out last week already? So somebody look can tell me the answer. 0 0.591. All right, so we have the damping ratio. So omega n now is going to be damping ratio 0 0.591 times the two seconds. So 4 over 0 0.591 times 2. What you get for that? Hmm. We need to cut the calculator. I don't know which part of that. How much you get? Oh, see, sir. 3.384. 3.384. Okay, so now our second order equation.
is g s is equal to omega n over s square plus two damping ratio omega n s plus omega n squared. So that is going to be equal to omega n, which is 3.3 f4. We're not so concerned about the top, but the behavior is governed by the denominator. So that's 2 times um, 0 0.591. times omega n, which is 3.384 s plus 3.384 squared. That's 3.384 over s squared plus, so 2 times 0 0.591 times 3.384. What do we get for that? Four, sir. Three point nine nine nine. So four. Mm -hmm. Four. And three point three eight four square. Point four five. Eleven point one. All right, so we work with it. So, so this is what our, our system should look like. But the problem that we have is that, um, fine. This is what the system should look like. Should be s squared plus four s. Plus 11.45. But it's a second order system. So if we look here, we see that this is second order. But the problem that we had, we had a third order system. So then, what do we do? So let's find the transfer function of, of the system that we have here. SQ 1, 2, 3, 1. K1 plus K2S over S squared plus 2S plus 3S plus 1 all over G over 1 plus GH 1 plus K1 plus K2S over S cubed plus 2s squared plus 3s plus 1. If we simplify that, um, going to add addition and again, that's k1 plus k2s all over. So we're going to carry the s cubed, so that's the s cubed, going to carry the s squared plus plus 2 s squared and then k2 s plus 3 s that is k2 plus 3 s plus 1 plus k1 so we have a problem because this system is second order. And this system is third order. So what do we do? What we have to do is add another pole to... So we have to add another pole to the system up here. So we are saying add a pole
But the poll that we had must not interfere with because this is this is the, tran the, the transfer function that we have worked out for the second order system. It's the transfer function that will make the system behave in the way that we want. So what we what we say we do in this situation is that we find the poles of so let me just write it down as 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 notes now. So find the poles of So the first thing we have to do is find the poles of the of our second order system. For the calculator, somebody can use a calculator or the MATLAB and find the poles of that system. If you want to find the poles of that system using MATLAB, it's going to be. Uh, I don't have a campus wide license and I have to remove. So y is equal to roots of 1, 4, 11.45. To get what the poles are. But you can, whoever can calculate it, I can just put it in there. We have the five hundred dollar Gynos calculator, so Chinese knockoff of the Casio. So we get um the first one three point three eight mm -hmm. at angle one twenty six. Let me plus or minus, give me it in rectangular form now. Right. Hold on, let me convert. The hands are supposed to be complex, sir. It's not supposed to be. It, it can be. If it is, is that a problem to us? Minus 1.99. So we're going to say minus 2, right? All right. Plus. Plus 2.73. Okay, so the roots or the poles are two minus two plus or minus two point seven three. So now what we do, so find a pole, then what we are going to do to add another pole. which is at least 10 times the real part of the of the pole above. So therefore, that implies that we are going to 
add S plus 20 to our, our system. So our at least S plus, so because 20 is 10 times the two that is there. So what we are saying is that if we add this S plus 20 to our system, to our S square plus 4, S plus 11.45, then this whole, which is S equal minus 20, will not add very much to the system, will not affect the system very much. So that's what we, that's why it is called pole placement now, because we are placing poles and each of them have their function. So we, we, we're going to make the system turn order by adding a pole, which is at least 10 times. Sir, sure. what if the two poles are real? If the two poles are real, it still don't matter. So suppose we got S plus 2, S plus 3. Then that would mean our poles are minus 2 and minus 3. So the pole that we'd be adding would be at least 10 times the dominant, minus 3. So the pole that we're adding, as we said, would be at least 10 times. So we would add up not a pole, minus 20, and do it the same way. That this minus 2 is the dominant pole. So if the poles are real, we don't really care. All we're doing is examine the real part of the pole. Remember now, this part controls the oscillation, the frequency of the oscillation, and this part controls the decay. So we are adding a pole that doesn't, that decays very fast, so the transient on the S plus 20 is not going to affect the system by much. So that is what we are saying. So um, it doesn't matter if there if there is no oscillation. If, if the poles are real and there is no oscillation, fine. So we're going to take the, the, the dominant pole, the most dominant pole, and we're going to multiply by 10, at least 10. R11, R12, R13, R14, R15, it doesn't matter. But at least 10. So for the purposes of this example now, so new system. As characteristic equation. S plus 20 times S squared plus 4S plus 11.45. And so we we'll multiply that out. You're doing it by hand, but you can use MATLAB and do it. So that's S cubed plus 4S squared. Plus 20 s squared, so that's 24 s squared. Plus um, 11.45 s plus 80 s. 11.45 plus 80 is 91.45. Plus 20 times 11.45. Well, uh, 20 times 11 is 220. All right, I'm preserve my brain cells. Don't know why I'm going to like my school challenge, please. So it's 22, 229. Check it for me, make sure so you don't write down any foolishness there. See if we get the same thing.
Am I correct? Remember the uh, chair member who, who write it in a mat lab, you know? Um, one twenty C O N V. Um, one twenty. Um, one four eleven point four five. I'm not sure this bracket is the right bracket, but. Yeah, there's an error that was made that I have to go and correct, but I have to wait until we reach. Up to we reach. And correct it at that point. So when we reach up here, when we, when we verify, then no, I could, I could deal with one thing that I should have, should not have done that I did. I'm getting an error. Um, getting an error in the. In the well, I have one comma twenty. Mm. And then look at instead. Just type in here, see how it is. I don't have it in front of me. I don't know if it's a square bracket, it's a problem. I'm not, not changing the bracket. Type in MC or NV in a bus. Yeah, man, it, it may have it, have it in it. No, it's it. Invalid expression. Um, it, it's saying that the, the one comma four, one comma four is a problem. All right, hold on. Let me can't remember. Still a problem. Yeah, let me tell you what you have to correct. Mm -hmm. Now yeah, the MATLAB in front of me. Um, then I would have. Mm -hmm. But when that when going down to the schools campus wide license. Oh, all right. So let you be equal to the one four, no comma, and let V be equal to the, where did it go? Instead of doing that. Yeah, that. So U equal 120, and V be equal to one four eleven point four five, and then put can U V. U equal to one comma twenty. Yeah, not comma. Don't put in the comma. Oh. So, but bracket do you equal bracket one? Yeah, square bracket, please. Oh, matrix. Okay. Mm. One twenty. All right, and then V. The one four eleven point five. So U equal. Let me 
اوكي بسم الله شاي اوكي And then, so, conv. Mm, you, comma, V. Yeah, you should work, no? Mm. Yeah. Yes, sir, you work, you're right. 1, 24, 91.45, 229. All right. Mm. All right. So, so, it's still work. <laughs> All right, so no. I made a little mistake. There's something that I left out that I should not have left out. So I'm going to go back now. Um, put, put it in. Because here's what happened. Each of these values should be corresponding to each other. The S's should correspond, but these two don't correspond. Everything has correspond except these, these two. Or we can find a value of k that would make everything correspond. But we need to find a value of k. But the, the 24 and the, the, the two, we have a problem. So here's what we have to do. Um, we have to go back up here, start from beginning. I correct everything from up here. So we have to have k1 plus k2 plus k3 s squared. There's a third order pole, so we need three. If it work out to zero, fine. That's not an issue. So this would be k1 plus k2 plus k3 s squared. So therefore, the transfer function would work out to be um, s plus k3 Sorry, 2 plus k3 s squared plus 3 plus k2 s plus 1 plus k1. So therefore, this down here would now be two plus k three So therefore, now we we find the values of the gains for the system. So k one, one plus k one is equal to two twenty nine. So that implies that k one is equal to two hundred and twenty eight. K two plus three is equal to ninety one point four five. That implies that k two is equal to ninety one minus plus eight eight point four five, and then um, two plus k three is equal to twenty four. So that implies that k three is equal to twenty two. So these are the gains. So 
So the point is that if we have a further higher order system, we just add poles until these two systems are, are, are equivalent, but we have to add poles that don't interfere with our, with our work. And then the poles that we add that don't interfere with our work have to be 10 times bigger in magnitude not sign than the dominant poles for the system. So we're good with that. Yes, sir, right here. Uh, there we can look at another example. Sir, I can ask about don't please, sir.
ஒரு ஃபார்முலா ஃபார் பீக் டைம் Okay, how about go at this one?
work out of value for the damping ratio yet. Yes, 0.69. Okay. So, the damping ratio is um, LN squared um, 0 0.05 over pi squared plus ln squared 0 0.05 square root of all of that that's equal to 0 0.69 so pi over pi square root of 1 minus 0 0.69 square what you get for that omega is 0 0.868. 0 0.868. So you're I got for the poles of the system. Minus 0 0.6 plus or minus 0 0.62j. Minus 0 0.6 plus or minus 0 0.62j. Yes, sir. 6244. Yes, sir. Alright, so. So what is the pool that is added? 6 6 6 so a new pole is equal to s plus 6 so our characteristic equation becomes
Char. Mm-hmm. What is that word? Char, Clar, C, what is that? C-H-A-R? Characteristic. Oh, characteristic. Yeah, it's characteristic. Transfer function of this system that we have. Uh, K1 plus K2 S plus K3 S squared all over S cube plus. What is the characteristic equation of this? Sir, one minute, sir. Um, for the characteristic equation, one time, a little bit more get um, one s cube plus zero point plus seven point two five s squared plus eight point two five s plus zero plus four point five. Yep. We work with that. One, tell me what it is again. Ah, oh, man, we get the same thing as I get, man. Oh, all right. Oh, oh, we 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 make a mistake. Uh, with a with a with a digit. Uh. Careful, yeah. Okay. Right, man. Right, right. All right. So the characteristic equation, the transfer function of the system that we started out with, what was what was that going to be equal to? Uh, so that again, sir. We want the transfer function of this thing up here, sir. This. It's s cubed plus k three s squared. The transfer function here. This thing that we're looking at here. That's the transfer function of that. So now let's multiply them, sir. No, you have to use G for what? One plus G H. You know, multiply them here and then use G over one plus G H. So that is K one plus K two S plus K three S squared all over one plus K one plus K two. S plus K three S squared over S cube. Uh, this is also over S cube as well. S cube plus two S plus one. S cube plus two S plus one. Uh, I simplify that we're going to get S cube plus K three S squared. Um, 
K2 plus 2S. K2 plus 2S plus K1 plus 1. K1 plus 1. And so we're going to compare the two characteristic equations. So we're going to compare this characteristic equation. With this characteristic equation. So I have S cubed plus 7.2 S squared plus 7.95 S plus 4.5 is equal to S cubed plus K3 S squared plus K2 plus 2. S plus K1 plus 1. So that is going to imply that K3 is equal to 7.2 when we compare both equations. K2 plus 2, 7.95. So subtract that's 5.95 and k1 plus 1 is equal to 4.5 so k1 is equal to 3.5 so those are the gains that we would require for our system Questions up to there. No, um, for next week's class, I'm going ask you to, well, suppose I have access to the campus by a copy of MATLAB. So, um, I need everybody to be in front of MATLAB. We are going to be looking at a few things. 
observability, controllability, stability, and we're going to use MATLAB to do our pole placement design for us. Um, so MATLAB can automatically do the pole placement design. So um, we don't have to Well, basically, it was much work. We can get the we can get the. We still have to do some more fear, some more work, but um, what not we just do the calculations for us. So um, how much pre play in front of MATLAB presently? Yes, sir. Second, I uh, should have access to MATLAB because we are using it in a, um, in a DSP. DSP. So you have it in front of you presently or you have access to it? We have access to it, sir. You can present it. <laughs> All right. So, um, you say I do I have a little dilemma here. All right. So, oh, I know what I will do. Mr. Campbell. Yes, sir. You have MATLAB. Yeah. Working with presently. So, um, I need to change the setting. I don't want to go up and go up and then we lose. All right. You know what? Um there are other things that I want to do, but I will do them next week. We're going to be using MATLAB to, to talk about those things. Um because I want to talk about state space, but uh but I need to this thing here marinate a little bit in your brain. So I don't want to talk about two different things in the same class session to switch all minds from that. So I'm going to um, pick up next week with with the MATLAB and talking about observability, controllability, um, and those things. But we have to talk about state space and use the MATLAB to obtain the state space equation for our system. And then we, after we talk about those things, observability, controllability, and stability, which you should have done in the control course as well. But most likely, you have to say, no, I've never seen before. So we we. we we're just going to do the MATLAB version of all of those things next week. So make sure that um, next week you have access to the MATLAB. All right? Yes, sir. All right. So we we'll stop in there. We're going to stop here. Yes, sir. We're going to stop here. Okay, sir. All right, sir. All right. So next week, MATLAB. All right, so. All right.